Welcome everyone, hope you're having a nice week. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you haven't joined before, uh, there is a Q&A button right beneath me. So you can go ahead and submit any questions you have there. And I will answer them as best as I can. All right, so the first question here, from Mike, if I want a blog to be members only, do I need to grant access on every single post? Uh, the, so you don't have to do it that way. There are more uh, efficient ways you could do it. Uh, probably the easiest way to do it is using categories. So let me just show you here. Um, So categories, you know, if you go to post categories, you can create any post you want here. So say that we, you know, you have different categories for your blog posts. And when you're, you're authoring your blog posts, you would just make sure that for whatever uh, the blog post is, you specify the category. And then when you are setting up your bundles, your product settings bundles, you can specify that this um, particular bundle will get access to particular, particular protected categories. So as a result of this, as soon as you do this and save it, every single blog post that you create that is in this category will automatically be protected. So that's probably the easiest way to do it, uh, most efficient way to do it if you're if you're creating blog posts on an ongoing uh, ongoing basis. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Can I make a free bundle available that members can request, but I approve? Um, well, free bundles currently can only be applied to an account by you. So what you can do is, so the request process really has nothing to do with the bundle or not. In my mind, you can just set up any mechanism that you want to allow people to make a request. It could be a gravity forms contact form. Um, it could be a button that they click that sends you a message or something. All you need to do is have something that lets you know that they want this bundle. And then you would just, once you receive that request, then you would just go into the manage members area, uh, find the person's account, go to access rights, and then just click apply bundle to their account for whichever bundle it is. So that's how I'd recommend doing that. Uh, all right. Can a member get a blog feed that shows them whatever articles they have access to. Um, yeah, so currently the way that I think it, it default by default the works that you know remember WordPress has archive pages and blog feeds, um, maybe the terminology RSS feeds or something. My terminology may not be correct in the WordPress world what they actually call these things. By default, if somebody goes to one of these kind of pages that you know shows everything in your in your uh, database in terms of posts and whatnot, currently what it'll do is it'll it'll it won't display the content. It'll display all the posts that are there. But if the person looking doesn't have access to it, the content will just say you don't have access to this or something like this. So that's the default way it works. Um, I'm guessing you already know this because 
your question is asking, well, can I just show can I just show them a list that doesn't even show them the title of something that they don't have access to? Um, and the answer is definitely yes. In order to do this, you would need to have some knowledge about working with WordPress templates would be the, um, let me just check out this article that Cindy just put in the thing and see if this is in relation to what I'm about to say. Um, okay, so this this is describing one of the first things that I was telling you about of how it behaves in default, in the default sense. So, but in regards to if you want to um, only show things that people have access to, you're probably gonna use, uh, if you go to our support center, you're probably gonna be working with the PHP interface, um, which is simply a set of functions that you can use within WordPress templates. WordPress templates are PHP files. And there's basically from, a, to describe it in kind of um, a high level way, what the template is gonna do that renders one of these feeds is it's going to have a loop that iterates over everything in the database, all of the posts, and it's just gonna render everything. But inside that loop, what you could do is use one of our PHP interface functions. Specifically, you would use the member mm underscore member underscore decision function. And you would use this in a conditional statement. If what I'm saying doesn't make sense, then you're probably gonna need to have somebody implement this for you. But you would use this function in a conditional statement, like if member decision has access to this content, or sorry, actually, it wouldn't be member decision. It would be um, a content decision uh, function because you're you're asking the question. What is the name of that smart tag? No, it'd be the access decision smart tag. Yeah. So you'd use the access decision smart tag as a PHP function. So mm underscore access underscore decision as you know, in the PHP interface documentation, you'd see how to make, how to use this in terms of a PHP function. So while you're iterating over all of the posts in the feed, you would just say if, MM access decision access equals true, meaning the current member logged in has access to it, then display it, otherwise skip it. So very easily, you know, I say very easily, if you get what I'm talking about, it's very easy uh, to do it. If you don't, you could still do it. This isn't this isn't super advanced like programming stuff, but if you've never, if you, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then it could be a little bit uh, uncomfortable for you to figure it out. But if you know exactly what I'm talking about, this will take you like 10 minutes to do. You can create a template that you can use to then um, apply to one of your WordPress pages. So that when people go there, it'll only display to them what they have access to. That's how I would, that's how I would recommend doing it. Um, yeah, if it's bundle access in your situation, um, then it depends on where you're wanting to do this. Like if it, it sounds like 
I would need to understand your situation more because my understanding of your question, how I interpret it was you're, you're asking, I have a page where I'm going to display all the posts that are in my system. And I just want to show the post to that person that they have access to. My answer was based on that understanding of the question. Um, so if your question is different, then you might want to rephrase it and ask uh, in a more specific way. Okay, well, if you're just wanting a page that shows them specifically what they have access to, it's a completely different answer. Um, and it's a, it's a lot easier to do that. Um, and this is basically, you're gonna be using member decision smart tags and you're just gonna do it, um, you know, create a page, which, you know, is gonna be their homepage and um, whatever. And again, you're gonna go find member decision, smart tag, this, Documentation is going to be your friend. It'll tell you exactly all the different ways you can use a smart tag, but just a very brief example. It, it's, um, um, oh my gosh, Graham, let me get out of here. So, member decision smart tag is all about showing or hiding content based on what somebody has access to who's logged in. So you're always gonna have an opening tag and a closing tag. So here we have two member decision blocks, opening tag, closing tag, opening tag, closing tag. And the, the basically the pattern here is that the first, the first block is going to be for the content when they do have access. And the second block is gonna be for the content when they don't have access. So if you're gonna do this based on bundles, you can do it based on a lot of different parameters. All the different parameters you can use are listed in the documentation. But if you're doing this based on what bundles somebody has access to, you're gonna use the has bundle parameter. So say, and then um, you would go to your product settings page, go to your bundles, and you'll see all these IDs on the right-hand side here. So you just look at the ID. So if you're looking for people of bundle B, the ID is two. So you come back to the page, so you put the ID of two here. Oops. Oh, don't. So you put the ID of two here as bundle. Delete all this stuff. <clears throat> so has bundle ID two, this member has bundle two. And then you again, copy this block, paste it. And then you just put an exclamation point in front of it. This means that they don't have it. So this member does not have bundle two. So when the person is viewing this page, the people who have bundle two will see this and the people who don't have bundle two will see this. And of course you can put whatever complex amount of HTML, CSS that you wanna put in here and make it look exactly the way you want. This is just a functional example. Um, so, and you would just do that as many times for as you have bundles and that on the homepage will show them exactly what they have access to, what they don't. And when they don't have access, you could even include um, a, the uh, purchase link. So you just copy the purchase link. Uh, and then paste it in here, you know, so that they can buy it right from the page. Um, so it's just a simple example of how you do that. All right. Uh, next question. Is it possible to comp a product instead of a membership? No, it's not possible to comp a product. And really it doesn't, based on how membership mouse is modeled, it doesn't make sense why you'd want to comp a product. Um, products are always about purchasing something. 
So, and ultimately the reason you're purchasing the product is to get access to the membership or bundle. So ultimately, if, if somebody, if you're going to not charge somebody something, then the product is not the thing that you're concerned with. You're concerned about comping access to the bundle or the membership level on its own product gives you, doesn't give you access to anything. It simply is describing what somebody's going to pay you for something. So if you want to comp them something, then you comp them something on the membership level or the bundle. That's how you do it. Okay. Do we have any more questions? All right, um, this is from Russell. I have a supplier that has member mouse installed. We're looking to get member mouse installed on our site. We are both membership sites. Is there a way of creating a member on my site and have it automatically talk to the other member mouse site and create that same member on there? Yeah, you can do this. Um, I'm probably not going to have the same password, um, but basically the way that you would do this is a combination of the push notification system and the API. So let's say that your site, the initiating site is site A and the, the other site is site B. So when somebody joins site A, you're going to create a push notification that um, what you do from developer tools, push notifications, create push notifications. So you'll say when a member is added uh, on any membership level, then call a custom script. And then you're going to have a script that lives, a PHP script that lives on the other site, on site B and you will put the location of that script here. Here are some sample scripts you can start with so that, that you'll understand how to access any data that is passed to that script from site A. And then on site B, on, in the script, you will call the um, API. Seriously. Uh, so you're going to be using the create member API call um, in the script. So you just follow this documentation and in the, oh, this is what I was looking for, getting started with the member mouse API, it tells you how to set it up. Here's a sample script that will call a particular um, method on the API. In this case, it actually is doing create member. So you would access in this script, it's basically hard coding the data into the script, but because member mouse, this script will be called by a push notification, this data that's currently hard coded, like first name, last name, email address, et cetera, will actually be accessed. Um, if we look at the member notification script, it'll actually be accessed as this sample script indicates. So this is all the different data you can access when the push notification is, is um, called. So you can see it's already putting everything in PHP variables. And of course, in order to do this, you need to have a rudimentary understanding of PHP. Uh, but you see the first name of the member is stored in first name, the last name and last name variable. So jumping back over to our documentation for the API call, you simply you know, take those parameters, set them up like this, and then pass them to the create member API call. And then it creates the new member in the, um, in your new system. Now, that's how you do it for members. 
Now, if you need to do this for bundles as well, it's pretty much exactly the same process, except your push notification will be triggered by a bundle being added. And then you'll use the bundle notification script as your starting point. You'll create another script on site B. And in this case, instead of the create member API call, you will uh, you will call the add bundle API call. Um, you're going to need actually you're going to need a member in this case. So first, you're going to need to call the get member API call, which takes an email address. So it'll look up a member on site B based on email address. If that member exists, you'll get a member ID. And then you will call the add bundle API call pass in the member ID and the bundle ID you want to apply to that account. So you'll be able to keep the, the two sites in sync in that way. All right. Um, let's see here. So Lee, you're saying when I comp the membership, I, it gave them all products and bundles. So how would I just comp a specific product created in their membership? Yes, you would create, when you comp the membership or bundle, you're giving them access to whatever it is that membership or bundle is protecting. So if you don't have the level of granularity you want with the membership and bundles you already have set up for this particular scenario, you need to create a new membership or a new bundle that only protects the things that you want to comp to that person. Uh, just launched my membership and your support team is top notch in helping me. Great, I'm glad to hear it. Glad that you're launched. It's the beginning of a whole new journey. Good place to be. So congrats on that. Uh, this question is from Hans. I would like to pass a custom transaction ID for each order to track where orders are coming from. Is there a custom field I can create that would allow me to store values and use them in a smart tag? You could do it that way, but if you have the knowledge and experience to do it that way, there's probably better ways to do it. So essentially what you're, what you're saying is you want to store a data point in the database and access it later. Um, this is gonna be similar to the answer I gave earlier about uh, creating a member on a second site when somebody's created on a first site, it's going to be involved, you know, where you have to, you want to trigger something based on something happening. In your case, you would use the push notification system and listen probably for product purchased. If you're doing this based on orders, you could obviously, you could also do it based on payment received trigger. Um, but in any event, you're going to listen for one of those events and um, and then in the for the order data, um, so if you look at these custom scripts, down here for product purchased. So you can see in here, uh, there's a lot of order specific data that's passed. 
So you can use the order transaction ID, you could use the order number, and then you would, again, you would call a custom script, um, you know, triggered based on, let's say payment received, um, call a custom script. And then in your script, you would then take this ID and store it somewhere. Now, there's not, there's not a public, well, you could, is there, I think you might be, let me just look at the, um, again, this is, you know, using the API to update an existing member. So it really is very similar to the answer I gave before. Um, but you would again need to call get member to retrieve the member ID and make sure the member's in the database based on the email. Actually, no, you wouldn't need to do that because the member ID is passed in the data. Actually, that's that's a correction to my my thing earlier too. The member ID would be passed in the data, so you actually don't need to do the get member API call. You already have the member ID from the push notification data that's sent over. Um, and then if you call update member, I think you can pass custom field data. Yeah, so you can pass custom field data to the to the member account um, and store it in a custom field. And then once it's in the custom field, you will be able to use that in smart tags, uh, custom decision, not, not custom decision, in member decision smart tags to decide or do something based on that ID or based on that custom field, or you can just output it using the member data smart tag. Um, so to recap, set up a push notification triggered based on payment received, uh, call a custom script. In that custom script, start with product purchased notification script as a, uh, as a way to know how to retrieve the data that you need. Um, call the update member API call within that script so that you can pass the custom field, um, pass the order number or order transaction ID to the custom field of that member and store it there. And, and just so you, there's the description is here, but basically custom field underscore and then ID number, you would re replace this with the ID of the custom field in question, which you can find by going to checkout settings, uh, custom fields. And then if you hover over these uh, field custom field names, it'll show you the ID. All right. Do, 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 do. Cool. Well, I think that's it. We'll go ahead and jump off, I guess. Um, so thanks everyone for joining and uh, Hope you have a nice weekend and I will see you next time.